Hello, everybody, and welcome to the No Bad Dogs podcast with me, Tom Davis, America's canine educator, the podcast about the lifestyle of living, working, and loving with dogs and dogs and dogs and dogs and more dogs. I'm excited about today's episode. Um, again, the first couple episodes, guys, for those of you who are listening, are going to be short and sweet um, because we want to get some stuff out there. We want to make it quality. And today, um, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about dog. what is dog training? And whoa, what a, what a subject. And how long can we talk about that? A lot. And there is a lot to it. But I want to just talk about um, you know, what I think dog training is and what I think, what I do. And I know it kind of sounds me, 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 but I just want to talk a little bit about the differences of like, I know some people who do the same stuff that I do as well. And dog training to me is, is a lifestyle. I think working with dogs is literally a lifestyle. I think, and it doesn't have to be if you professionally work with dogs, if you're the person with four or five dogs at home, you are a dog person, right? And so your dog, you know, your dog is, all of our dogs are very important to us. And we all have capabilities of what we can and can't do with them. And I think there, there becomes a certain point where we just hit a wall, where we're like, my dog just won't do this, or my dog will not stop this. And I think that that's what dog training is. And for me, I, I don't do that. Like, I don't do dog training. And I just, I just actually Googled what training is. And I'll read you the, the definition. The action of teaching a person or animal a particular skill or type of behavior, which is interesting because, honestly, for me, I always just assumed dog training was teaching dogs sit, stay, wait, which is what a lot of people come in here and think that we do. Um, So I want to, I want to, I just want to shed light on the types of training that, like, what I do and what, what I think, what I think the, 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 I guess the public can't talk. Sorry. I guess the public thinks. Um, and so when we're talking about dog training, right. And you come in and you have a puppy and your dog needs to know the foundational imprinting of like basics, right? Basic training. So sit, stay, wait, um, et cetera. Those, those foundational terms or down or stay or whatever you guys can consider. And that's the beauty of working with dogs. Like my perspective is probably a hundred, almost a hundred percent different than somebody else's uh, about working with dogs and things like that. But, um, so dog training to me is when you come in with a eight to 10 week old puppy and you say, I want to do dog training. I would say, you're right. You do. But when somebody comes in with a three and a half year old mixed breed or, purebred dog that they've recently adopted or has recently shown signs of behavior, to me, that's, that's just dogmanship. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, dog training is again, like the definition, I guess, says that that's what dog training is, is changing or, or fixing or kind of re-altering a behavior. So I guess it's training, dog training. But for me, the, the dog training that we do here is, is, training for something, right? So if you're like a freaking soccer player and you have an open net and you're shooting, like that's training to me. It's like, where can I put this ball every time for the big game, right? So like when you're training, it's training. And and same thing with like basketball, when you're th- shooting three throws or something like that. Like to me, that's training is you're training for something. If, if, you're, if you're a runner and you're training, that's what training is to me is really conditioning your body, your mind to, for the real thing. And so when you, when, when people come in here and talk about training, that's what I kind of assume what training is, is you want to bring your dog in to do a sit, stay, wait, to train for the real thing. But I guess it could also be translated to behavior as well. Um, because you know, if your dog is reactive, say your dog's dog reactive, we're going to start training with the dog to not be reactive, right? So when you're in public, we're going to train the dog to maybe not bark or jump or lunge or whatever it is. But behaviorally, I think that there's just a lot more in depth. And I think there's just a lot more that goes into it because when you're, when you're dealing and you're trying to remod behavior, 
there's so many moving parts and there's so many variables. And I think it comes out, I think it completely separates from training because training is usually preset or controlled variables of like your sit stay is always going to be in sit stay. The only thing that's really going to change is your distraction. But when you're doing behavior remodification or working with, I don't know, you know, working with trying to get a behavior out or trying to put a behavior in, I think sometimes it's a little bit more in depth training. And uh, sorry, the guys in the back are uh, doing some personal protection and they're yelling and screaming and it sounds funny. Yep, they're yelling. But that's what the No Bad Dogs podcast is about. We are, I am literally, and this is my day off, by the way, quote unquote off. Um, we usually train Monday through Saturday to the public, and then Sundays we do a sweet personal protection program, and um, some of the cops come by and work their dogs, and we have some training clients that come in, and um, they they just so happen to come in today with some yummy food, and then here I am sitting here starving, and they don't bring me any, so I'm going to give them shit for that for a while. But anyway, um, so if you hear people yelling in the back and dogs barking, um, don't be alarmed. It's just the No Bad Dogs podcast. So moving forward, training and and behavior remodification. And for those of you who are out there that have no idea the differences, really quick, I, I, I personally think that dog training is training. You're teaching a dog for reality. But so that means you're teaching your dog to sit when you're at a stop sign. You're teaching your dog to stay when you're bringing the groceries. You're teaching the dog to leave it when you drop a piece of meat that you don't want them to have. And then I think what I do and what many of my colleagues do is we, I, I call myself a problem solver because when you come in here, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to train your dog. I'm just not like, I, I mean, I may do some stuff to counter condition and manage like sit, stay, wait, like, yes. But like a lot of what I do is I'm going to work with the owner and I'm really going to educate. And I get a lot of people that love what I do and they say, Hey, you know, this is great. And then I get other people that get really pissed off and they're like, stop talking so much. I'm like, yeah, but the problem is the owner like h how is it that I can get a dog to do what the owner wants to do almost immediately but the owner can't so why would I sit here and work with the dog when obviously clearly it's the owner I always tell people I'm basically an instructor uh, let's say a violin instructor right and people come in and they say and they blame it on the dog which is the no bad dogs podcast what's up um, and what it means is they come in they have this the broken dog, so we'll say a broken violin, and they say, this thing sucks, uh, it won't play anymore, it doesn't do me any good, um, you're our last hope, or we're going to get rid of the dog, and we're going to get rid of the violin, and it's been in the family for years, and whatever it may be, so it's an important aspect. But, And then what happens is I take that violin, and I play it beautifully, right? And I'm like, well, wait a minute, guys. I thought you said that, you know, and so, again, training and behavior work and, and education, that's where the, that's where I think it separates is, um, when you're training and the dog comes in and knows nothing, you do have to train. So if a dog, so I guess let me clarify and sorry if I'm getting too in depth and too like crazy right now, but follow me here for a second. So training. So if you bring a dog in and they don't know sit or they don't know stay, I am going to have to put in the work to get that dog to sit and stay. There's nothing I can do to expedite that. There's nothing I can magically do with experience to, to say, look, this dog knows sit and stay. Okay, you follow me? So that's training, okay? Now, behavior. The dog comes in and they say, my dog is out of control. My dog is crazy. My dog is jumping. And the dog is clearly just neurotic at looking. <laughs> Not really, but looking. And then I take the dog and then all of a sudden, ah. <sighs> And it calms down and it, and it really just relaxes and they go, holy crap, I've never, and this happens all the time in my facility, I've never seen my dog act like this. Where's my dog? What did you do with them? What did you do with her? Whatever it may be, happens every single day here at the Upstate Canine Academy. And that to me, my friends, is, 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 is something that I would be considered like a problem solver, right? Like somebody who, so like somebody who can can take a dog and change their behavior by understanding what they need if that makes any sense i think it does but um so moving forward and i'm progressionally starting to make sense i i hope out there um to you but 
that's that's what I that's kind of what I just want to talk about is like when when you're doing training, like you could go to PetSmart and there's no shame in going to PetSmart training. Some of them are okay, and your dog does need to know sit and stay because it's an important part of foundation. But when you go somewhere else with your dog and they need more behavior work, they they actually need somebody that knows what they're doing with the dog to teach you how to do it, and that's where the violin comes in. And so if I play the violin perfectly and I give it back and they break strings and I go, oh, I wonder who's to blame here. And so for me, that's the biggest difference between dog training and behavior modification and and an educator um, is I'm able to not only teach a dog to be a certain way, but I can also more importantly teach the owner how to get that beautifully played, tuned up violin. And I think that that's like, uberly important when working with dogs. And I think if you don't have versatility in working with dogs and, and have the ability to do both of those things, um, then you're, you're, you're limiting, um, what your, what your clients can get. And so for those of you out there that just have a dog and, you know, don't train professionally or anything, um, just be known and, and be aware of be known. Does that make sense? I think it does, but be aware that there's a huge difference if you have a problem with your dog not staying when you say and actually your dog having a behavioral issue because you messed it up. And you need to go to somebody that knows how to understand and read and reprogram the dog versus going to somebody who can make a dog jump on its back legs and do a backflip because they may be really good at doing that but they can't teach you how to be a better dog owner. And that's super important. So when dealing with dog training versus anything else, make sure that you're going to people who are versatile and they stay in their lane. Like when you bring a puppy into me, I, I give it to my other trainers because I, I just, I'm a problem solver. That's why I get out of bed in the morning. I absolutely love, my, my number one passion is helping people understand their dogs. It's why I am here. I personally believe that God planted me on this earth for doing that. And so when I get a puppy that doesn't have any issues, I get bored. Like foundation is important. Like puppy stuff is important. It's very important. But it's just boring to me. Um, and, and that just means that like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't fire me up. And I'm probably not good at it personally. Like everyone thinks like, oh, this dog guy who does all this stuff with dogs. I mean, he must be great with all dogs. And I'm really just, I'm only great with dogs who have issues <laughs> and I can fix them. So anyway, that's kind of my topic for today is understanding the difference between dogs who need dog training and then dogs who need behavior modification and actually needs more in-depth work with reprogramming them because you're going to bang your head off the wall spending a ton of money working with a dog trainer who can get a dog to spin in circles versus a dog trainer slash educator who really knows the behavior of the dog and really knows how to go in there and retune and, and restructure that violin that you smashed and broke and I think that that's super important. And I hope this information saves some of you out there of frustration, money, and hopefully, you know, your dog doesn't get stuck in the middle between your bad decisions. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me on this. We're going to continue again. These are going to be short and sweet, uh, the first couple episodes. So thank you guys so much for joining me on the No Bad Dogs podcast for today. And this was the difference between dog training and behavior modification trainers. Um, in the future, we are going to go in more in depth, but this is my highlight on it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you haven't yet on my YouTube, subscribe to me. I would really appreciate it. Like this video and I will talk to you guys next week. Peace.